Welcome back. Hello if you're new here. I'm Hannah and this is Sweet Fern Homestead and today we are talking about week seven, meaning seven weeks before our last frost date so that we can get an idea of when we should start what. But week seven for me is all about peppers. And I also have a little cheat sheet here because the Johnny seed packets do not come with photos, which does make it hard for someone who's visual to kind of keep track of everything. I'll put pictures on the screen as I talk about them, but these first two do have pictures. And I'm gonna start with the one that I think is just so exciting. This is the AHA 80-20 sweet pepper. And it is called that because 80% of the peppers are sweet and 20% of them have a kick, like a habanero spicy kick. To me, that is incredibly exciting and fun. This may not be everybody's cup of tea. The reason I'm growing these is primarily to make hot sauce. When I ferment my hot sauce for the year, I use a combination of sweet and hot. So this just seemed perfect and they're beautiful. I mean, so many different colors. So that's the first one. The second one is just your standard green jalapeno. No big deal. People tend to make a lot of cowboy candy out of this when they're preserving foods. I love jalapenos. Then the next, and I'll put these pictures on. So this is the Baron. The Baron is a poblano and it's just basically your large stuffing pepper. So if you want to stuff, that's the one you would go to. Then I've got shishito, which is considered a sweeter pepper. And the shishito, they have those, they're very thin walled and they're really good for frying. Now it said you can let these go red. I did get some red ones from the farmer's market last year and I found that I liked them either way. The next one is the Ariba, and the Ariba is another jalapeno, but the reason I got this one is because it's yellow, and I thought that was really cool. Now this says it starts yellow, and then it will transition to orangey red if you wanna let it do that. The next one is the Procraft. Now this one is a bell pepper. I'm growing this one for a couple of the kids that love bell peppers. This goes from green to red. It's large, it's slightly sweet. You know, this is our this is our typical bell pepper. I don't know why Delilah knows exactly when I'm videoing so she starts crying. Next one is Glow. Now Glow is a mini. It's a mini bell pepper. It's four to five inches long. Um, and you know, I'm just adding, I think I got that because the name, I liked the name Glow. Crimson. Now our crimson is a sweet spicy fryer, Crimson Lee actually it's called, six to eight inches, a paprika type pepper and also good for salsa. So I think as far as what I do for cooking and preserving, this is a good pepper for me. I like a sweet spicy flavor. I use peppers in so much cooking but primarily I end up fermenting a lot of peppers and then also preserving them in cans, jars, um, things like the Singapore hot chili sauce. I think that one would be great for. So I've got that one. And then the last one is Goddess. Again, the name, I loved it. This is a banana pepper. Banana peppers, I did grow last year at a really good plant. Um, these are eight to nine inches. They're mild when yellow, and then they get a little bit sweeter when they ripen to red. And um, it mentions that they're good for pickling, and that's not something I had done. I had actually ended up adding my banana peppers into a lot of my batches of salsa, and that worked out really well. So this is a big week. I'm gonna be broadcast sowing. They're gonna start in a tray. I'm just gonna sprinkle a bunch of seeds in each tray. Each type will get its own little tray. That's why it's a big week for me. And then, um, or maybe I'll split the trays in half. I'll probably do that because I think that would be just too many. I'll split the trays in half, half and half. And then once those come up and get their first set of true leaves, I will prick those out and then put them into module trays. So that's happening. 
All right, um, I'm also getting some leaks going. I didn't, I don't think I started any leaks in the house. I think I only winter sowed them. I like to succession plant leeks because you can overwinter them, but you can also use them like green onions. You don't have to let them get big. You can use a leek at any time. So if a leek is growing and you just snip off some of the top, you can throw that in like a little green onion to anything. They're really good in stocks, broth, soups. They're just delicious. I like them tender like that. And then I have another one. This is called Red, Red Aztec Spinach. I don't, I have to check. I don't think I started this one yet, but I might have winter sowed it. But I wanted to just get a few greens going in the house as well. This is about the time when you wanna make sure your calendula is getting going. Calendula, I, I actually put this out before June last year and it just did beautifully. It just, it was one of my very first things to start to take off in the garden. Great pollinator wonderful for using like infusing in oil salves i think i've talked about calendula this is a plant you want you want this plant so if you could only pick a couple things to grow include calendula it's edible you can throw it on your salads all right um i'm gonna just start planting some marigolds here and there getting some marigolds started they're really helpful in the garden they smell beautiful to me but not to bugs this is the Coco Gold, I'll show you. It's a really big one. I'm probably only gonna do that one and the White Kilimanjaro this year, but I always say that and then end up doing other things. I started a Digitalis, a foxglove. I believe I started the apricot one last week. I've never done foxglove before. It's probably super late to be doing this, but what I I'm here to tell you is just do it anyway. It doesn't matter if you're a few weeks behind, do it anyway. So I wanted to see how that worked. I do have little seedlings coming up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the cream ones. The thing is, these are really special seeds. They're expensive. You don't get a lot of them. So if I wasn't gonna be able to germinate these without grow lights, I didn't even wanna bother wasting any more. So that's why I only did one. So I'll get these going this week. Okay. Now week six is gonna be my tomato week, so there won't be many tomatoes growing right now. However, I just got this one and it's a dwarf tomato, it's called Arctic Rose. This is from Fruition and it says 67 days to fruit. So that got me a little excited. It's, it's dwarf, but it grows about three feet, so it still needs some staking. And I thought, huh, I wonder if I start just one of these now if I could have one tomato, that's really early for us. So I'm gonna focus on it being this one. And it just, I mean, that's a, fruition is beautiful. I mean, their photos are beautiful. I love their seed packets. Really helpful for someone who's visual. And I get it with Johnny's, like it probably saves money, it saves ink, it's better for the environment. And they put so much information on their seed packets. However, it's just really tough visually. So those are the main seeds that I'll be growing. And then I just kind of went through to just double check and make sure that I've got what I need. This is a good time to plant thyme, to get some cilantro going. I realized that I hadn't started any cauliflower in the winter sowing stuff. So I am gonna just throw these into a few milk jugs and get those going. The Tong Ho Big Leaf is one that I'm very excited about. It is an edible that looks, I think it's in the, yeah, it's a chrysanthemum. And you can eat these greens as they come up, kind of like spinach or kale, like a dark green. And then they also grow really tall and beautiful. This is just like my most exciting thing that I'm growing this year. Is that true? I can't remember if that's true or not, but I am very excited about this one. And it was the first thing that germinated outside and I'm pretty sure that it may have been compromised. So I'm going to do a few more of that in, in just in the winter sowing jug still. It's fine, you can still do it. Don't you worry. So I've just kind of was peeking through, like do I have my perpetual spinach planted? Um, do I have my kale going? You know, what What do I need? Do I have any loose ends? And I think for the most part, I'm good. I just wanna make sure that I have enough greens going because the greens will be one of those first 
foods that come after this, what they call the hungry gap. Um, Swiss chard, beet greens, things like that. And I just wanted to mention kale. So I planted lacinato kale and I planted the curly kale last year. And what happened, I didn't do any row covers and I will be doing that this year. But what happened is the cabbage moth went to the lacinato, the flat leaf kale, and it left the curly leaf alone. So we were able to harvest a ton of this kale. I did do a lot of soaking it and I did some salt water and stuff just to make sure there weren't any worms on it, but they really, they just didn't infest it like they did the flat leaf. Here's the thing. I can plant both of them again. I will use row cover, so I'll probably get both this year, but let's say I'm not doing that. These will serve as a distraction for these. So you could get a really cheap packet of some sort of lacinato kale or just whatever. I mean, you get a lot of seeds in here. And then interplant them with the curly kale and then you're guaranteed to get your kale. So th that worked really well for me and I just wanted to share that little tip in case you were suffering with those bugs too. That was a year cabbage moth. We bought a butterfly net and Dave and I would run through the yard catching the little white moths. So this year I'm just using floating row cover. I'm not even messing with it. We also had quite a bit of pest pressure from slugs. And so I'm gonna be doing some research in the coming days and just trying to figure out like what works best for us. I know a lot of people do a beer trap. We're actually sober, Dave and I, and so we don't keep alcohol in the house and I'm not really inclined to go to a liquor store as a sober person and buy a beer. So either I might borrow a beer, borrow a beer from someone, um, or you know, just look for other options of what we can do for slug management. Hopefully it won't be as bad of a slug year because we won't get the amount of rain, knock on wood, that we got. And I know I'm like saying, oh, please don't let us get so much rain this year, but it was, it was torrential, it was flooding. It was like there was an entire section of my garden that could grow nothing because it was almost underwater the entire growing season. It was brutal. And um, that brought so many pests and bugs to the garden. Now we don't do any irrigation. We don't irrigate our lawn. We don't irrigate anything. I water things when they first go in, those first few um, days or even weeks, depending on what it might be. And then I mostly just let things be. Now, of course, if we went through a, a time when we were getting like nothing, no rain, um, I would look to doing some supplemental watering, but where we are and in this climate, I try to grow things that work with where we live, what we, you know, what works with our climate. And right now, we're getting a ton of rain. So all my winter sewing jugs are, are getting watered. All the tulips, the daffodils that are coming up are getting watered. Any new thing we plant, Dave's rose is getting watered. We're gonna be putting in fruit trees. Those will probably get watered. So we do, really don't have to worry too much about that. As far as all the other seeds that I've planted, I'm slowly pricking things out, getting them into the modules. All right, so just to keep you kind of seeing what's going on, the progress of things. The celery have their, their true leaf. You can see those really well. They're adorable. My Napa cabbage is doing very well. There's a couple of them getting their second set of true leaves. Uh, more celery, this, it's just a stupid amount of celery, I know. It's kind of ridiculous. This is my lettuce over here. I moved the sweet potato to a warmer spot because nothing was really happening. Some more cabbage here. I'd say it's about neck and neck with the cabbage outside that's been winter sown, so that's interesting. Goodness, more celery and more celery. I don't even want to talk about the celery. <laughs> All right, and then my onions. We'll do a video on onions coming up soon. Look at these poor little things. Just all flopped over and sad. But that's okay. They're going to be fine. And there's more upstairs, but this is what I have going down here. If you are enjoying these videos, please consider giving it a like. 
that really helps with getting some traction in the videos. If you are not subscribed and you'd like to be part of future videos, please hit subscribe. And my favorite thing, of course, is when you leave a comment. It's been so fun getting to know more of you through the comments. As always, thank you for being here. Appreciate you.